Hello, my name is Farhad Safezi from the ELSA Institute in Zurich, Switzerland. And please let me give you in the next three minutes a brief overview about the presentation that I gave at this year's ESCRS in Lisbon. The title of the presentation was How to Best Stabilize Keratoconus in Young Patients and How to Improve Their Vision. Young patients children are not just small adults. So we have to be very careful and particular about special details that need our attention. Um, when we started looking at the long-term results in adults uh, a few years ago, we realized that there might be stability over five, seven, even 10 years. And this was not entirely the case in children. The three first largest studies appeared in, were published in 2012 two Italian studies and a study conducted by my team at uh, the University of Geneva. And what we found was a little contradictory in between the studies. We saw an overall cross-linking effect that was similar to the one seen in adults for year one and year two after cross-linking. But it was in the third year of follow-up that we had divergent opinions. Um, one of the Italian studies stated, and um, the only one that had such a long follow-up, stated that there was still stability of the results, whereas our findings suggested that we start losing the beneficial effect of cross-linking after three years. It took another four years to have enough data published to do a meta-analysis, which was performed by a Dutch group last year, and indeed 22% of children and adolescents that receive cross-linking will show reprogression, so reactivation of the disease after five years. This is 22% as opposed to 5 to 7% in adults. So interesting, most interestingly, when the disease is at, at its most active, the effect of cross-linking might not last a lifetime. Let's look into this. Um, you need to remember two things. The longevity of the cross-linking effect Cross-linking can only be effective when there is cross-linked material in the cornea. And the human body, and so does the cornea, has a natural turnover of its entire tissue, which in the cornea is six to seven years. We only know this since a few years. So theoretically, after seven years, you do not have any cross-linked tissue in your cornea anymore. And on the other hand, please remember that the older you get, the stiffer your connective tissue becomes, uh, so does the cornea. So let's take two hypothetical cases. If you perform a crosslinking in a patient that increases the natural crosslinks over age, if you perform crosslinking at the age of 27, then you will protect the patient for the next six to seven years by CXL. And then at the age of 35 to 37, the only thing that protects the patient is the patient's age. And 37 is a fair age not to be progressive in keratoconus anymore. But on the other hand, if, the, if you cross-link a child at the age of 12, then this is an entirely different ballgame because after seven years, the child is 19 only. And this is where in most cases, in many cases we see now, long-term follow-up, they re-progress and need a second cross-linking. We have performed a number of second cross-links uh, without any major issues, and we are looking in the long-term data now to get a better feeling of of uh, what we have been observing. And as far as improving vision in young patients go, my personal policy is to adapt special lenses below the age of 25, quadrant-specific or scleral lenses. And once the patient hits the age of 25, you might look into other possibilities such as topography-guided surface ablation. Thank you for your attention.